everybody, Stuart A. Swerdlow. And Janet Diane Moria Swerdlow. And this is the Expansions News Podcast for the very middle of December. Unbelievable. 2014. Very, very strange uh, year. year. Only two weeks before the new year, 2015. That's right. And our so, class. Uh, that's like uh, a month. Like a month away. Yes, yeah. that's right. Anyway, people, uh, I don't have a lot of news today. I have a rant. Janet will have the news. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you weren't in any pans or anything? Hmm? I shouldn't have said that. I didn't want uh, well, I shouldn't have said that. I didn't have They have to said. go to my Facebook page, but that's what you're going to be wearing at the January class. Oh, the pans? <laughs> oh, with that, I, would you spread your legs in the thing? It's yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah, yeah. They yeah. have to go to the Facebook page. Yeah, that's, that's, so that's an incentive. Yeah. Well, but we you don't know, scare them away. the news was very stagnant this week. Uh, there's no Ebola stories. That kind of went down. away. Uh, there's no Syria ISIS stories, really. That kind of went down the hill. Uh, not much news about Ferguson. Uh, well, there but, are protests here. Yes, but uh, what else is new? It's all under the radar now. Uh, the weather is odd, of course. Uh, we have a winter lewd here, uh, but we'll pay for that. And the fuel prices are way down. Very strange. So I think there's no news because they don't want you to watch the news. They want you to get... Fill up your I want you to go car. drive and shop. Exactly, and spend mm -hmm. your money. Mm -hmm. Of course, there was there were weather stories. For example, the big storms in California, all the flooding. There was a tornado in LA, very mm -hmm. unusual. There were heavy floods in the Philippines. Uh, so the Pacific is rocking and rolling as as usual. And so I begin my rant. Oh, that wasn't it. No. Oh. No, I did. I have like maybe three rants. And then I'll let you talk. And the first rant is about the U.S. torture report from the Senate Intelligence Committee. Now, isn't that an oxymoron? Senate Intelligence doesn't make sense. Those two words don't go together. Which they had a report about the Gitmo uh, prison camp in Guantanamo, Cuba. And uh, it makes the Nazis look like yogis. Okay, Really, if this is true about what the United States has done, U.S. cannot ever complain about any other country, ever. But why would they even let that report out? Well, I'm going to get to that. It's, okay. the, it's the end of my rant when I get to the other sources that are kind of related. The U.S. should be ashamed of itself, uh, as well as the others. Uh, apparently, the British were watching when this happened. Uh, there's a report that British intelligence agencies were there when it happened. Um, and so that's my first rant. My next is about, because the news only has two things. The news has racism and Bill Cosby. Mm -hmm. Maybe I guess that's part of the same, same thing. thing. Actually, there's three because there's also that uh, uh, the emails released from the Sony Corporation. But I'm going to get to all of that because the racism, white versus black, um, police killing unarmed black men, but they also kill unarmed white people as well. And uh, uh, of course, that led to the hackers. Uh, which uh, released those uh, private emails from the top executives at Sony Corporation, which insulted Angelina. She was very insulted. Like we care. As, as or we're well supposed as, to care, I guess. I mean, her lips almost collapsed. I no. mean, seriously. She has to go get more implants. She needs more, more Botox on that. Yeah. But, you know, uh, the emails uh, said terrible things about certain TV and movie people, which, by the way, I agree with them. No? Are you going to tell us what they were or we can't repeat you them? No, they said that Angelina had no talent and this one was like a whore and, you know, it was not nice. But you know what? People, this happens in every corporation. If they released emails from, from the top executives to each other, from any corporation or from politicians, it's the same thing. Well, these people are icons. They're there for a reason. Genetics, whatever. So well, I see it. Not... I see it as a plot to undermine the TV and movie industry, a la uh, Edward Snowden, who did the same to the intelligence agencies. Everyone knows the comments are true, mm -hmm. and it happens in all industries. Um, it's just now that they're in public. Right. You know, but uh, well, it's not a surprise. Yeah. It should not be a shock to anyone. Especially people who watch our stuff. Uh, but my biggest uh, rant, I think, is about Bill Cosby. Because, listen, almost 20 women have come forward in the last few weeks to say how he drugged and raped them. My question is, why did they wait 20 
30 years to say anything. No more. I mean, how old is he? Like, like He's 80? 77. Yeah, like 80 years yes, old, practically. You know, uh, I think, well, you, you see some of those women, most of them are has-beens whose careers, if they ever had one, are over, and they're looking for one last gasp of fame and fortune by coming forward like that. Um, I just, you know, maybe he did something, maybe he didn't, didn't do something. You know, all people in Hollywood, they're not uh, love, light, and peace angels. Well, why do you think they're trying to bring him down anyway? Well, I think it's related to the Sony email release and to the torture release report. That's not, see how I pull it all together, see? Mm -hmm. Brilliant on my phone. It's going to happen. Yeah, because I, to me, and this is my opinion, I see this as a sabotage from a secret organization, and they actually named it... And I forgot the name of it. Uh, just well, you can't tell us morning. anyway because it's a secret. I think it's actually from uh, Kuiper Belt program people who are now uh, activating their program to sabotage politicians, the media industry, except governments. I think that's what's going on. Well, you have to remember, Bill Cosby was loved by everybody. And still by many people. And so that's why you, know, you attack those you love. See, it's a, it's a two-pronged thing because by attacking him, it's racism because right. he's black. It's also attacking the media. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of stuff going on here. And there's it all even, ties in. Yeah, there's a, a thing I posted on my Facebook besides your little decorations that you're going to wear maybe at the January class. But anyway, I posted about a black man saying, I, I am black, my sons are black, I don't want them racially profiled, this is how I'm dressing them, this is how I told them to act because they're black, I don't want them shot, I don't want them racially profiled. So I posted that because I'm curious what people think about that mm -hmm. because to me that's still living out of fear. Yeah. You know, is. and so if they can get us to live and react out of fear, that's another way that they can open us up to mind control and mm -hmm. control, period, yeah. mass control. Mm -hmm. And the only other thing, it's not a rant, it's an observation mm -hmm. of what's been on the news a lot lately are two-headed things. For example, recently this week it was a two-headed baby, two-headed salamander, two-headed cat. Now, not twins, but two heads, one body. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, to me, this is a trigger for alters, where different uh, minds in the same body come forward. Mm -hmm. Well, and I reported on that, I can't remember the name of the singer, but she said that she even had a stage presence that she named, she gave it a name when she was on stage, and then when she was somebody different when she was off stage. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a good point. Yeah, so uh, keep your, uh, your violet protection up, your brown mergers up, because, wow, a lot of triggers this year. But isn't that uh, the mask Janus, J-A-N-U-S? Mm -hmm. Don't they have two faces on that one? Well, you ought to know, Missy. Well, that's what I'm asking. And people should look at your picture on Facebook. I haven't posted it yet, but I will. Oh, yes. <laughs> you should look at that. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, go ahead now. Oh, it's my turn? Your turn. Oh, that's a pretty calm rant for you. Well, you know, I've been so exhausted lately mm -hmm. that that was my explosive rant. I see. Okay, because you are preparing for the prophecy. I'm preparing for the prophecy webinar, webinar. next week. Um, well, actually... It'll be this week when this is posted. Yes, December 16th and 18th. Mm -hmm. All right. So I know you've been working very hard on that. I have been. In fact, I don't think you realize how much... Hard work that was going to be to put together. I didn't. It was a lot. I spent a lot. All right, we're going to first move to LA because mm -hmm. I know you like that. I'm sure. And there is, we all know, which you've talked about for years, about the earthquake that's going, that's building in mm -hmm. that, in yes. that area. Right. Well, I found this particular article interesting because there is now an earthquake lady named Lucy Jones. Oh, she's been around a long time. Yes, but what's interesting is this isn't just any old earthquake lady. This is a very important earthquake lady who actually works for USGS. Yes, I know. And she got a doctorate in geophysics at MIT. Mm -hmm. And she wrote a book with a colleague in 2008 called The Shakeout Scenario. It's the most comprehensive report ever written on the social, physical, and economic havoc that a 7.8 southern San Andreas quake would likely wreak in the L.A. area. Correct. It says it reads like the screenplay of a disaster movie. Yeah, the little one called Earthquake, remember that, mm -hmm. in the 70s? I remember. And she writes that the question is not if, but when, Southern California will be hit by a major quake, one so damaging that it will permanently change lives and livelihoods in the region. Now, what's interesting is this isn't just, you know, some off-the-cuff person. No, I'll tell you about her when you're done with that. All right. Anyway, so L.A. actually employed her away from USGS for a year ah. to help them figure out how to survive a quake. Because yeah, she leave. said, 
Well, she said people aren't going to leave. So she said because people aren't going to leave, she wants them to understand how to basically get through it. I guess that's if you survive it. So, but go ahead with what you have to say, because that's no, first of all, that's really say. stupid. Why? Because you know, it's like if I know a tree is going to fall on my house and crush mm -hmm. it, I, but I'm I'm just going to stay there till the tree falls on my head. Mm -hmm. How stupid is that? So, I mean, people. I mean, LA people. Okay, they're like la 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 la. Let's well, they're on shaky the, ground. Let's like go to the mall, okay? You know. But anyway, she years ago said that there would be three disasters in the U.S. This was a long time ago. She said. One might be a, a major terrorist attack. Another, oh, she said, another her. might be a major hurricane in the Gulf. Yeah. And the third would be a, a, a catastrophic quake in L.A. Well, guess what? She predicted the first two came yeah. true. And now she's telling us, so people, Pay she attention. knows, she's, she's more than she says she is. Well, the other thing is they showed a picture of her under a table with three other yeah, big Yeah, I saw that. And the issue is, which I have read, and in case of a disaster, you really shouldn't get under the yeah, table. Yeah, because the table get crushed. Right, you need to go to the side of the table. Yeah, but they said that's not true either. No? No, because uh, you don't know if that will be safe, because if something does hit whatever you're standing under, you could be pushed or blown away and then crushed by something else. So where are you else. supposed to go? Away from L.A. All right. Well, anyway, so the earthquake lady has spoken, but I found that interesting, because apparently she's important enough to the USGS that she, they allowed her to write the book. And they loaned her out, so to speak, to L.A.'s. They don't do that unless they know that's going to happen. Something. is in, So there's a reason she's out there. Anyway, so keep an eye on the earthquake lady, apparently. Yeah. And now on to the Pope. You know, I've been giving you a lot of Pope news lately. Mm -hmm. This one is also interesting because we know Pope Francis is, is proving to be very controversial mm -hmm. amongst Catholics. And we've talked about... Amongst everybody. Well, but especially Catholicism because we talked about... Will he be the last pope? He's supposed to be the last pope. Uh, he will be. And now we're seeing a lot of controversy that's dividing the Catholic Church. So this particular one ha says, was there a secret plot to elect Cardinal Jorge Mario Bergoglio at the pap papal conclave last year? Did he give the go-ahead to such a plan? And does that campaign mean that his election and his papacy are in question? They said that, they're, that the uh, experts are saying that the latest talking points promoted by some Catholic conservatives are upset with the direction that Francis is leaving the church, which I've been talking to you about. Then, apparently, there's a new book. It's always a book, of course. Mm -hmm. And this one is called The Great Reformer, Francis and the Making of a Radical Pope. And he talks about, in his early life in Argentina and, of course, a career as a Jesuit, which I always bring up, the author's name is Austin Ivory. He talks about there was an insider account of a group of cardinals who got together to elect him. Well, see, I don't think that's... No, because they picked the Pope right. years before. But then he gave this book to the Pope, apparently, and now the book itself is creating an issue, so much so that the Vatican has already issued a statement regarding the book that says that they have expressly denied the description of events mm -hmm. because... Um, and then, because they're saying that, of course, that didn't happen, and it's not allowed. Then, the church sources are saying because the Vatican gave such a quick reaction to the book, showed them that they're concerned about the book. Mm -hmm. So my point is, and this is, again, a way of stirring up controversy, because if anything is out in the public, mm -hmm. there's a reason. So I thought that was very interesting. And then he apologizes. Ooh. The author apologizes. Ivory apologizes to the Religion News Service because the chapter he wrote about that says, quote, I think the whole chapter makes clear that he never had any role at all in his own election, and he promises to rewrite the book. So, in other words, they threatened his life. Or, but it's, or it's all part of the, you know, the mm -hmm. plot. And it says, um, others see the account of a conclave machinations as further evidence that Pope Francis is, for them, a far more manipulative and autocratic figure than the public believes. Well, duh. So, anyway, I just found that interesting. Again, they're doing things to stir up controversy within the mm -hmm. Catholic Church itself and to divide the people, right? To hopefully bring him down on some way. Then on more Pope Francis stuff, because mm -hmm. now he's saying that animals go to heaven. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. But that apparently is also up for debate. Mm -hmm. So he, he talked about that in his weekly address in St. Peter's Square in late November. And then he says, quote, Paradise is open to all creatures. And there we will be vested with the joy and love of God without limits. Mm -hmm. And it's so beautiful to think of being face to face with he who gives strength to the soul. Uh -huh. 
So again, you know, first of all, he's welcoming in the aliens. Now he's welcoming in animals. You know, Stolichnaya gives strength to the soul too. So apparently, that is causing more controversy. And again, all the professionals are talking about that because they're not saying that animals don't go to heaven, but they're not saying that they do. So again, these are just ways that the Catholic Church can be you know, brought into question from the inside. All right, then we're going to go on to Florida, because I know you love that stuff. Uh, no, I don't. There is actually a satanic temple that won the battle to bring a Lucifer display inside oh, yeah. the Florida State Capitol yeah, for the yeah, holidays. Yeah, I heard that a long time ago. Apparently, there's a religious diorama by the satanic temple that will appear in the rotunda in Tallahassee on December 22. It features an angel falling from heaven into the fires of hell with a biblical reference next to the scene that says, quote, how you are fallen from heaven, O day star, star uh, son of dawn, unquote. Mm -hmm. Now it says that Florida's capital, it says, quote, is a veritable free speech battleground in recent years. Along with the Satanists, the Florida Prayer Network, which I don't know, the International House of Prayer, which I don't know, American Atheists, Tallahassee Atheists, the Freedom From Religion Foundation, and this one I have heard of, believe it or not, it exists, what? the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. Oh, stop it. Yeah, it's real. I read about it. You should do a cooking show on them. <laughs> well, I did read about them. Anyway, they're all going to be displaying in Florida. And then it said last year that a Seinfeld-inspired Festivus poll created, created out of beer cans made an appearance for the holidays. Uh -huh. So that's Florida for you. That's a sassy Tallahassee. And it is. And then moving on to the UK. Do we have to? We have to. I'm not amused. Old Serum is a medieval city near Stonehenge, which has been recently revealed by scans. They've been talking about this for a long time. Mm -hmm. But now they claim that there actually is a city there. The ruins are hidden underneath Stonehenge. Oh. And that they said a few stone walls and some ruins are all that remain. But with scanning technology now, they're finding out a lot of things under the ground. Mm -hmm. And it says that they turned up a large open area, more than 550 feet long, which one expert believes may have been part of a royal complex. Royal complex. Which would lead us to ritual and so forth at the Stonehenge grounds, which of course are preserved above ground. Like every six months they come up with a new story about yes. Stonehenge. Yes, or anything that's hidden underground. You know, they're, mm -hmm. they're beginning to dig into the earth, as I tell people, as you dig inside of yourself and reveal your mm -hmm. own personal secrets and histories, the earth has no choice but to reveal its hidden things, mm -hmm. which we're finding every day. Mm -hmm. And speaking of... England yes. and the Queen. Yes. Uh, I'm the Queen. Go on. It says a mushroom with hallucinogenic properties I was heard. found growing in Buckingham that, Palace. That queen. Of course, and but they write no one suspects Queen Elizabeth II of cultivating the magic mushroom. I well, bet I a, suspect her. You no, know, she's out there at night digging and oh, here's my magic mushroom. Yeah, no, I'm sure. Charles, get my pot. Yeah, she says here. Now this this was interesting. Mm -hmm that it's called an Amanita muscaria. Yeah, I bet it is. Growing wild in the extensive palace garden or palace gardens during preparations for a television show. That's how uh -huh. it was found. Uh -huh. But they also say the palace officials that there are several hundred species of mushrooms growing in the palace gardens, uh -huh. including a number of naturally occurring Amanita muscaria. Sure. Right. And, however, listen to this, it has been commonly used in rituals. It says that right in the article. How unusual. Who would have thought in the Queen's Garden? Yeah, but the officials also say, in case you're wondering, that the mushrooms from the gardens are not used in the palace kitchens. I mean, it's like No, ridiculous. because they're used in the palace bedrooms. In the rituals. Yeah. In the rituals, the hidden mm -hmm. rituals. In the dungeons. Chambers. Now, this article, I, I kind of liked it for a variety of reasons. It's called The Christmas Truce of 1914. And do you ever hear of that one? I don't know. It's during the first Christmas of World War I. Mm -hmm. It took place on the Western Front. Apparently, German soldiers lit candles on Christmas oh, trees. Oh, yes, I did hear about that. Yes, and the British soldiers, apparently on the other side, everybody stopped fighting. Mm -hmm. You know why? Why? Because the Queen sent the magic mushrooms. Maybe. But anyway, apparently the Allied troops, so we had Germans, French, British, and Belgian. Mm -hmm. This was called No Man's Land, and it happened in Flanders, Belgium. Mm -hmm. So apparently they all came out of their trenches, they shook hands, mm -hmm. they buried each other's dead. Right. They played football after they cleaned the, 
the right. field. Uh -huh. They exchanged rations and gifts. Mm, isn't that lovely? Yeah. And then they killed each other. They caught rabbits that were hiding in their cabbages and they ate together. Mm -hmm. So they did all of that and then they did not want to go back to the war. Well, duh. But their, magic mushrooms. their commanders threatened them if they didn't start shooting each other. So after the truce was over, then they start shooting and killing each other again. Is it any wonder that aliens don't want to communicate? It's like, okay. Humans are bizarre. If we had all these people together, and then why didn't they just tell their commanders, no, we're not shooting anymore. Well, that just we're shows done. you that the wars are not about people. They're about the evil governments that create it. But that's what I'm saying. The people don't want this. But they're doing it because they're mass mind controlled. They have to stop this. I mean, there's that old saying, what if they gave a war and nobody came? No, but here, here's my, my thing. Is that if you just did that, you, you know, had food with your right. own, you know, and did all that. How could you then go back the next day and say, okay, now I'm going to kill you? Right. How could you do mass that? Mass mind control. Even so, I couldn't do it. Well, they, they put stuff in their food. They do all kinds of things. They threaten them. But you know what? At the, some point, people have to stand up and say, I'm not going to go to the war. Well, that's what, right. Then there wouldn't be any war. That's right. So anyway, I thought that was kind of interesting, but Christmas truce of 1914, so hmm. keep that one in mind. Then we go on to Iowa, which I know you love the state of Iowa. Iowa. Actually, I do like Iowa. It's very flat, but it's very... Well, it's kind of rolling hills, very pleasant. Yeah, there's not a lot happening in Iowa that we no, don't... No, corn, anyway. a lot of corn. So I guess that's the reason why they are now inching closer with Iowa's planned driver's license app. Mm. So you can basically use your phone to have a picture of your driver's license on it. So if you get stopped, you can just show your phone. Uh -huh. But there is an issue with that because what if your battery on your phone is dead? Right. Or you have a cracked screen or you have stuff on there you don't want the police officer to see. Right. So there's a lot of issues, but apparently Iowa is one of 30 states that let drivers show proof of insurance on their phones, which I no. didn't know that. I don't know what the other 29 states are. But anyway, they're hoping by uh, 2016 that this will work for everybody, I guess. So. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What if you don't have a phone? Well, I guess you're in trouble. You gotta use your license. Yeah. And do you remember my story last week about that man who was supposed to be eaten alive by the animal? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, apparently there was a lot of disappointing yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Because for starters, instead of using the, I think it was like a 27 foot snake, they went to a 20 foot snake. Ah, mini. They changed it, mm -hmm. and then they, you know, they had him covered in pig's blood so that this uh, snake would eat him. That's what you do to me sometimes. Yeah, but you like that. I know. But he had a suit on first, a heavy suit. You don't wear oh, this no, suit. No, you always make me naked. That's right. Put the blood on me. Yeah. So anyway, so this guy, he said that the snake's jaws went over him, but of course they don't show that. I don't know if they did on the television. Uh -huh. And then they started crushing him because he was supposedly yeah. in a How crush. How unusual! Yeah. Who would have expected that? He was in a crush. Proof suit, but he said he felt his arm going numb in his hand, so he got scared. No, his brain is numb. So he got scared and, and he made them stop. So I don't know how you make a snake stop. I guess you're supposed to scare the snake and then it lets go of its prey. But I mean, the whole thing was really ridiculous. The whole thing is stupid. But it has to do, again, with ritual, which we already know about. So anyway, I just thought that was interesting that it was, people got very angry about it because they said they watched the show. I guess it was a two hour show. They watched for an hour and 45 minutes, basically. For for nothing. For the, the, the scream, get me out of here, he's yeah. crushing my head. But in the meantime, they still got the, you know. I want to shove them right in the mouth. They got the imprinting for the public. Yeah, a lot of uh, publicity. Next time you should have a shark eat them. And I have a very interesting story. This you have to watch the video for. I can't put but this up. There's to. a link. But anyway, it shows a man walking into a store. Uh, it must be a convenience store. And the man touched the owner in a variety oh, of places. I, did say, I saw that, yeah. And as he touched his shoulder, he touched his mm -hmm. head, the man just kind of stood there frozen. Mm -hmm. And then the robber reached in and took the man's wallet, and then he just walked out the door. Mm -hmm. Cause he, he like hypnotized them. Well, that's what they claim, but I think it's some kind of triggers by touching people mm -hmm. certain places. Yeah, well, puts them in a different state. Yes, so. And Corey the, Geller used to do that. But the fact that they're showing this on the internet, this is. You know, like a forewarning for people. But they never so. caught the guy, did they? No. You know why? Why? Because he's an alien. Well, he probably obviously was part of this, but they're starting to show people an more and more. He mm -hmm. might be. And now this one I again found, well, my, I just have two stories left, but they're both oh. good ones. Okay. One is about um, the Venezuelan beauty factories. Have you heard of those? That doesn't go together. 
Well, apparently it does, because they, believe it or not, have produced more beauty queens than anybody else on the entire planet. Venezuela? Yes, they've produced six Miss Worlds, seven Miss Universes, six Miss Internationals, and two Miss Earths. Really? And in these beauty factories, apparently they take girls as young as four, mm -hmm. and they run them through whatever it is they run them through. And people that are in poverty actually will, like, starve, not have food to get their girls into this, these beauty academies because if they win, you know, they get world fame, they get all kinds of publicity, you know, they get food, they get places to go, they get travel scholarships and whatnot. And these girls apparently have all kinds of surgical procedures done to them to make them into these uh -huh. Miss World type of pageant winners. They said that as young as 12, they actually build... Um, I don't know what do you call them, like casts for their waist, so their waist, you know, grow small. They remove their lower intestines so they don't absorb as much food. Mm -hmm. They go through nose surgery, they go through breast surgery, they go through bottom surgery. They mm -hmm. do all kinds of things besides to teach them how to walk and talk and do all these. So, but the parents bring their children. Oh, you know what else they do? They put, and I talked about this once before, they actually put mesh. They sew mesh onto the girl's tongue so it hurts oh my it hurts to eat so they don't eat as much. Who wants to do that? Well, Why would they do that? But because they're desperate to get out of poverty. Well, if you lived in Krakas, Venezuela, but you know, Caracas, Krakas. Yes, I got it, dear. I'm ignoring it. But the, this is my issue. There's, I'm sure you remember this series of books I told you about because you never read them. It's called The Uglies and Pretties. No, I won't read that because I'm pretty. Anyway, it's called, I want to read it's the, called the Uglies and Pretties, and what they do is they separate the children from their parents, basically at birth, and at around the age of 15, 16, they, begin, they go through a procedure of surgeries to make them beautiful. So it reminds me of that, it reminds me of the Hunger Games, and to me, these are poor people bringing their children in for experimentation and paying for that to happen. So every country in the world, you know, they experiment in different ways that they're, and see what works. Mm -hmm. And so here these people are willingly turning over their girls and turning them, oh, they even give them hormones just to make them grow taller. They do all kinds mm -hmm. of things, and the poor people are paying for this. How can the poor people pay for it? Well, you know, $10 a month or whatever. They do what they can to make this happen. Well, Venezuela has a lot of oil. Yes, but apparently the, the, probably the rich people don't have to send their kids to this kind of school. Mm -hmm. It's the poor people that get experimented on in all the countries, unfortunately. You know, there's a big UFO base off the coast of them as well. Yes, I knew that. You did know? Yes, I did know that. I'm sure everybody it's knows. It's called that. the Crack-Ass UFO base, yeah. right off the coast of crack -ass. So anyway, I found that interesting. And then, now there's another young woman breaking onto the pop scene, apparently about four years ago, who I've never heard of, and I am sure there is a reason. Mm -hmm. Her name is Victoria Modesta. I'm sure you never heard of her. No. She actually is an amputee. In fact, she was born apparently with some kind of mobility issues. Mm -hmm. And so she went and underwent at the age of 20 a voluntary below the knee amputation to improve her mobility. How could that improve your mobility? Well, because, well, I don't know, because I don't know her medical history. But that's what, this is what their publicists are saying. And she says, quote, I have never felt comfortable thinking of myself as disabled, and this has inspired me to actively challenge old-fashioned views and create a platform in mainstream pop culture with other artists where I have always known I belonged. I want people to feel new feelings that they didn't know they had. The time for boring ethical discussions around disability is over. It is only through feelings of admiration, aspiration, curiosity, and envy that we can move forward. Mm -hmm. So she has an absolutely beautiful prosthetic leg built. Beautiful. And it shines lights and all kinds of things. And it has beautiful, she wears beautiful shoes. And then in her video, which she's done a music video, which she claims that she wrote and produced herself, but you know, we don't know. Because mm -hmm. it has to, again, it has to get out in front of the public for a reason. But it is, a, is, it is very striking, and in her video, she has a little girl watching her on the show. She has a cartoon character modeled after her. One of her prosthetic legs, from some, besides the one that she has with the beautiful shoe and lights, is a very sharp, pointed cone, mm -hmm. like a, almost like a spider. So she's like a superhero. Yeah, so then she can write. She can take that leg, and if you bother her, she mm -hmm. can, you know, like, and you're dead. 
So they have a little girl with her doll, so she's ripping the legs off and she's putting in the music video and emulating this lady. So anyway, there's a lot of nuances and I invite everybody to watch this lady, use your brown merger symbol first, but I think that we're going to see her as a model for things to come because uh, apparently she's been out there about four years according to this. She's been in London, she's been in Milan Fashion Week, she performed um, at the 2012 Paralympics closing ceremony as the Snow Queen. And she's been written up in the New York Times, Vogue, ID, and Grazia. So, Victoria Modesta, I think, is somebody to watch. Uh, she has this new video, it's called Born Risky. I think she's going to wind up in crack ass Venezuela. Yeah, right? I'm not sure, but anyway, I just think that it's, uh, it's, it's a very interesting story with a lot of interesting ramifications, publicly mm -hmm. speaking. So anyway, she's trying to develop a more empowering example of what it means to be a musician, model, and artist. So I think we're going to see... And cyborg. Yes, that's right. Transhumanism, mm -hmm. a lot of things, a lot of implications, mm -hmm. and a lot of even satanic ritual is involved in here. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things going on. So that's my news. Okay. That's my news, except for January. I want to remind people... Well, actually, I should remind them, first of all, of our Prophecy webinar. What, next it's right. the first webinar we've done in a long time. 16th and 18th of December. December. Yep. Where you will participate live with us. You will interact with us. We will give you visualizations and exercises to do, you will do them, write up your uh, results, give them to us directly, and we will comment on that in the second webinar Correct. to let you know where your part is mm -hmm. in the overall scheme regarding mm -hmm. prophecy. So it should be fascinating. Mm -hmm. will be fascinating. Mm -hmm. Then January is our class, right. hyperspace, over soul extravaganza. Like and I mentioned every week, a uh, lot more information than last time. Yes. We always... Well, it depends on who's there, Most but we ramp really it up a little bit. going to be a lot more. We ramp it up a little bit. So anyway, it's fun. Mm -hmm. It's a fun, good learning week. It's a good way to make good mm -hmm. connections. And some people say, you know, they come just because of my food. They come because of the camaraderie. And they come because of me. They come because of your humor. And sometimes what you teach, no, what we mm -hmm. teach. And what I wear yeah. or, or don't, don't wear. wear. And then it looks like you'll be going to Poland the end Well, of first Prague. Prague. Let's not forget Prague. And maybe, the, okay, yeah. Because I'm doing a movie in Prague. Yeah, a docu something or another. I'm not telling you what it is. Yeah. All I can tell you that it's clothing optional. And you may be seeing clients then, there, depending upon your schedule. Bunch of things, yeah. And then, uh, then to Poland. Okay. Then to Vienna. Okay. And then possibly to Japan. Oh yeah? Where shall meet the princess, mm -hmm. who shall give me magic mushrooms. Yeah, well, let's hope not. That she got from the queen. Yeah. Then, guess what? Then, Something that I don't know about? Well, no. It's Then I've been invited to the Free Your Mind Conference yeah. in April near Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then shortly after that is our April conference. That's right. So Addicted to addictions get hooked on health instead. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we always have lots of things going on. So it be sure you. It's going to be very busy next year. It's busy every year for us, I think. Be mm -hmm. sure you get onto our Facebook pages, like our fan pages, mm -hmm. help us raise up in the Google uh, ratings, mm -hmm. invite your friends to like our Facebook fan pages, mm -hmm. write to Auntie Fee and tell her that you want me on her cooking show. Right, and I will actually taste Auntie Fee's cooking you will? live. Really? Yes, and then of course I can't tell you how I will react. Yeah, we'll see. Mm -hmm. So anyway, but lots of stuff going on here at Expansions. It's never a dull moment, right? Mm -hmm. I would like a dull moment. You would? I don't think so. One, I'd like at least one no. dull moment. You're Eastern European. You like drama. Oh, yeah, yeah. Stop saying that. Yeah. You're killing me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. See you next time. Bye. Bye.